So those on the left are those essentially are people who think that society is too unequal and that the government should be doing something about it. Those on the right are those who say, look, at the end of the day, if we're all going to be better off, we need to create the incentives for people to take risks. And that therefore means that they, at the end of the day, some people who successfully take risks have to be well paid. So, you know, that's a continuing argument in our society about what's the best way uh, to advance. Now, that's essentially the difference between left and right. And that is the division that for the most part at election time, you know, if you are right wing, you more like to vote conservative. If you're left wing, you're more like to vote Labour. However, Brexit is not about left versus right. If you is ask, it about good versus evil? <laughs> that, that is for you to decide. Okay? John, before you go on, this is what happens every time. Both Francis and I voted Remain, but we're both quite concerned about, you know, uh, democracy being thwarted and all the rest of it. But just to annoy a lot of our audience, every time we mention the fact that I mention the fact that we voted Remain, mm -hmm. Francis says... Because we're good people. <laughs> uh, and then we get a massive wall of YouTube comments uh, having a go at us for saying that. And it's now well, become a joke. I mean, you, 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 you. We're not trying to pin you down, but you're, uh, you're, you're inflicted on yourself. We, we, have, <laughs> uh, we now have people saying, when are you going to start selling T-shirts, which say, which say, I voted Remain because I'm a good person. So we'll get there. Anyway. Well, Cap, well goodness, goodness is in the eye of the I'm really glad, I'm I'm really glad you, you started talking about okay. it because I was going to ask you about left and right. right, and right well, it, it's yeah. not a crucial thing to, and, it, and it's widely mi misunderstood. Brexit was not about left versus right. We weren't arguing in the EU referendum about the role of the state in the economy mm. and how do we best in inequality. We were talking about immigration, about sovereignty, and what our relationship should be towards an institutional phenomenon that can be regarded as an example of the a wider process of globalization. Right? Mm. The, and whether or not, if, if, if I ask you a series of questions about your attitudes towards inequality and incentives on the rest of it, and I do that, it, hard, it, it does not enable me at all to predict whether you voted Remain or Leave. Left-wingers were as likely to vote Leave as were right-wingers, okay? The division in the EU referendum was between social liberals and social conservatives. And this is an argument about uh, what it kind of society you are comfortable living in and what kind of society you think Britain should be. So a social liberal is somebody who says, look, I don't care what your religion is. Um, I, your sexual practices are up to you. Uh, the, what moral uh, uh, code you follow is ultimately up to you. What language you speak is up to you. Whether or not you salute the Union Jack or what symbols you decide to adhere to or respect is up to you. And by the way, I love living in London. It's a fantastic, <laughs> diverse ci city. Um, so these are people who are comfortable, indeed embrace the idea of social di uh, diversity. They're essentially people at the end of the day say, look, it's up to individuals to decide social and moral code and the religious code, et cetera, they live in. But at the other end of the spectrum, there's an argument uh, uh, we might call a social conservative that says, no, look, at the end of the day, if a society is going to have at least an adequate degree of social cohesion, then actually society does need, to some degree at least, need to be able to enforce a common moral code. It's a good idea that actually if we do all have some sense of common adherence to a set of national symbols, it is a good idea certainly that if we all speak the same language. Um, and of course also what tends to be true that people of this disposition therefore tend to be rather uncomfortable with a diverse environment. These are the people who would echo Nigel Farage's comment that you know, they are uncomfortable when they cannot hear English being spoken on a bus. These are people, of course, who tend to live outside of London because if you live in London and you hear English being spoken on a bus, it comes as something of a surprise. <laughs> right? um, so, um, so, but, th but this is an important argument about yeah. what is the best way of organizing society. Now, social liberals, voted Remain, overwhelmingly. Social Conservatives voted for Leave. Now, this, is an element, this, this has always been an element of our politics. It won't surprise you to hear, because the secret is in the name, Liberal Democrats have always done relatively well amongst social liberals. 
They by no means get all the social liberals, but those who vote Liberal Democrat are disproportionately social liberal. And, and Liberal Democrats are more clearly demarcated by their social liberalism than being on the left or the right. Indeed, mm. the Liberal Democrat Party tends to smither a bit on the left-right spectrum. You know, it sometimes swings to the left and then it swings back to the right and then it swings back to the left again and tends to call itself centrist. UKIP. UKIP voters, by the way, are not right wing, or those when the UKIP was... <gasps> Mind blown! We're not right wing. <laughs> UKIP voters don't like inequality, right? Um, uh, the, the, the bit where they will sometimes de uh, depart from others is they're not quite sure they trust the state to do anything about it. <laughs> but you know, remember, UKIPers are people who don't like the way that Britain is going in a whole variety of ways. And it isn't just about immigration, it's also about economic inequality. So UKIPers tend to be on the left, but they're social conservatives. So the thing is, uh, for, uh, in, what you would normally have expected in an election in 2017 about Brexit, where you expect the Remainers to go to the Liberal Democrats, and you'd expect the social conservatives and the Leavers to go to UKIP. Well, the, the Leavers decided that their best uh, um, chance was going with the Conservatives and UKIP look, it was beginning to look like a busted flush and the Democrats still struggling to recover from the sins as many people see it of the coalition. Okay, So the two parties whom you would expect and indeed during um, uh, you know, much of the previous period had been articulating that social liberal social conservative divide were relatively weak. So what happened? The Conservatives lost ground amongst Remainers and gained ground amongst um, leavers. Their vote, therefore, it, become, it was always a bit socially conservative, but their vote becomes more clearly socially conservative. On the Labour side, yes, the Labour Party does gain a ground amongst leavers, but it gains more ground amongst Remainers. One of the things, by the way, that I suspect might now dis, dis, uh, 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 upset ma many of your audience, in my view, in many ways, Jeremy Corbyn in 2017 achieved what Tony Blair had been trying to deliver for years, which was to deliver a middle-class, social liberal, university graduate vote. Corbyn's electorate is much more obviously Blairite than either the Blairites or the Corbynistas would like to believe, because Corbyn's was not particularly successful. Uh, well, no more successful than Ed Miliband been in getting left-wing voters in. His success was getting in social liberals. Now, but then the crucial, so therefore what we're then getting, we're getting Conservative and Labour not only now having to articulate the left-right divide with which they are comfortable, but they're now having finding themselves articulating this social liberal, social conservative divide. Around 70% of the conservative vote is socially conservative, right? And it's Remainer. Around 70% of the Labour vote is social liberal, and it is it, uh, conservative vote is Lever. The Labour vote is is Remainer. Right. Um, and given that, there is virtually no statistical link. So, so. The probability that you are on the left in the way that I have defined it is more or less unrelated to whether you're a social liberal or a social mm. conservative, right? So we've now got these two dimensions. Now, if you think about it, if you've got two dimensions, all right, and you're going to articulate those two dimensions and they're orthogonal to each other, mm. at right angles to each other, you really need four parties. Yes. Yeah. But it's being articulated by two. So conservative and labor are both being deeply disrupted because they are now finding themselves tackling an issue which is not a left-right issue, um, it's an issue that taps a different set of values, a set of values that they are, are not at heart of what they are about, but which is deeply disruptive of their normal electoral coalitions. And therefore, they are struggling to deal with the issue, as well as the fact they're also deeply polarised about Brexit.